this is where we want to end up. Nice clean lines, beautiful clean wall around the window. A great bench where we can have someone sleep in storage underneath. So here's what we got to do next. We're going to build our single bed with some storage underneath. So that consists of one long plank like that, another long plank beside it. That's on the bench on the right hand side. This one's going to be cut in the middle. And so the underneath the bench actually goes to about here. So we'll be able to flip up this part and be able to flip up this part with storage underneath. So if you look at this as being 3D, and this is the floor. What we've got to do next, this is a wall, back wall, right? We've got to build basically a box that goes from here up to here, comes out. So it comes out eight and three quarter inches. This piece here is 19 inches tall. So we need to build a box that's 19 inches tall with enough supports in it that it can support the weight for this piece to go on. So with our wood right there, which is, uh, I think they're called one by ones, but they're more like a two by two. You can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong with that, but we got to build basically this shape that goes like this, looking top down, like this, support, 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 like that. And that way when, and this is still bench material, so that when this piece flips down, it's supported. And then in here, you've got a small amount of storage area. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I had to sort of take a pause and get help with the final two panels because I just couldn't do it on my own. It was just not working. So I've got a few, a couple gaps in the middle there and uh, that's okay. I'll do some trim later on in places like this where there's a little minimal, minimal gap I'll fix. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and put on this side right here. So that's my next one. No more nails onto the side. Actually, it's construction grade adhesive now, uh, just because it was a better price than what I wanted. And I'm gonna put that thick on that wall and then I've cut a panel that's gonna cover that whole side. It's gonna go four feet down. And that's when I know the bed is gonna be in the right position to come up off of the bench a little bit because I want some under the bed storage. This is gonna be the side where the bed is. One thing you're likely noticing right here is that all that vapor barrier that I'd done, all the work it took, all the vapor barrier had to all come out. It, it wouldn't fit properly. And when I went to put some of the wood on there, it just didn't fit. So I did the internet search and on YouTube and decided to rip it all out and start over from new. Yes. This is exactly how I visioned it and it came out really nice. And I also wanted to do a laser engraving of something to do with camping on the wood. So this is what I chose. And I lasered that right on. Okay, now it's time to start spending some money. So I found a faucet that I wanted to use. It was on Amazon. I think it cost me about 18 bucks. That actually works really good. It's rechargeable. I bought a cubic mini stove. This is likely the most expensive thing and it cost me about 1600 bucks. And I wanted to do solar and I found this kit at Costco. Now let's get into finishing up this table. So I'll show you how it actually works here and it worked really good for my needs. So it is a chilly day out there, zero degrees Celsius and windy, and it's gray. So I figured the easiest thing to do is this little project, which is the door. So we're gonna tackle that today. We're inside the garage and it's nice and warm. Took me a little while to get the, the high and low toggles off of here. It's probably not what they're called, but they're uh, sliding 
cam lock piece that they had one up high and one down low and so from the inside you could close both of them high and low and then of course with the lock on the camper door on the on the knob itself you'd have a actually a pretty good secure secure door so once I got those things off I started on this window it of course had really really old adhesive on there so I went very slow to get it off of there and when I did I replaced the smashed window with metal instead and that was pretty much getting the door done now here's the mini stove that I that I purchased it's a beautiful little stove the cubic mini it's called and then I start my install onto the wall here and uh, geez it worked absolutely perfect I built basically the camper all around it um, so here's the portion that goes onto the wall and then the stove is going to go onto it and the silver part that you see not only holds it to the wall but it also prevents uh, combustible material from lighting on fire when your stove is nice and hot and it has uh, adhesive to it that's really hard to get off but it does protect it makes it pretty so that when you get it off of there it's shiny and there's no scratches with the measurements that you have for where you want to put your stove it's actually really good on the website for cubic mini stoves and the grizzly stoves you just put all your numbers in then it spits out exactly what you need in terms of the double walled pipe and the wall protector if you choose it and all the other options so I found it really useful so you can even do that if you're considering a project and then you know how much you're looking at spending I did find it really useful uh, some of the sticky tape that came on it because like you see on this piece where it's got the arrow going in the specific direction where the smoke is gonna go so when I took it off I knew exactly what was the top and what was the bottom sort of thing so it actually really is useful in protecting everything it's just super hard to get off so the instructions are uh, are very good for the cubic mini stove I did go on a couple YouTube videos to look at how to do it and of course here I bought the fresh air vent piece the fresh air vent just makes sure that the air that's coming in that's drawn into the stove and the combustion chamber is coming from the outside and not the air inside the cabin the feet here are very tedious to get on they take a lot of patience they take you know if you have big fingers or sore fingers they're quite hard to get on but once you get it on and get it all set up it's absolutely just beautiful so here's an end of the day look at everything I'd accomplished to this point and I was pretty happy with myself you know I've got all the ceilings on there you can see where I put the where I laser engraved the camper piece I've got that bed piece I've got this stove all on just about ready for a new burn its first burn which I'll show you in a bit yeah everything is actually looking very good the way I wanted so here I start working now on my shelves I've been kind of working on them picking away them depending on the weather and they're absolutely come along just great came out this morning and I'm like weird the truck looks like it's further away from the garage than I had it before and then I looked and as the sun's out and it's warming and it's melting the trucks actually just on its own slid down the ice about a foot and what that did is take this jack which was fairly straight before and pulled it back and pulled it away <laughs> and there it is the jack's actually fucking off and i can see how rotten all that wood is added to the list and the back ones were both terribly at least a 30 degree and it got worse and worse as I looked at it and as I peeled it apart and peeled it higher and higher it just got uglier and uglier and uglier and all this wood is just rotten. So I peeled it out basically all of it until I could find something that was good and then replaced all that with pressure treated wood and slowly closed it all up again and uh, although you can see some buckling on the outer outer portion it wasn't that bad when I got it all back together and then I put these two by fours 
I sprayed everything with a little bit of gray paint just to protect the wood from moisture and then I got back at the fireplace. So here's the fresh air vent from underneath that I punched a hole through uh, the floor to make that work and this is the ceiling uh, as per the manufacturer's requirements. High temperature silicone doesn't look too pretty but it does a great job at sealing everything and then I got back to my cabinets and got them installed and they look absolutely great around that little fireplace. And so then we're on to the solar piece. This is part of the solar pack from Costco and I got these pieces that go right on to the battery that I bought. Bought the battery at a different place called Battery World. Here's the charge controller hooked up and powered up. And the next thing I did that day was the floor and it actually came out really good. I wanted to end off on a positive note so I wanted to show some of the drawer pulls that I did. Laser engraved on leather. Beautiful.